Hi guys, my name is Tensor. Welcome to another Flutter tutorial video. Today we're going to be talking about animations in Flutter. In Flutter, the animation system is based around a set of animation objects. These objects have their own state and we can have them either be coupled with our widgets or we can have them be decoupled from our widgets. The animation object itself knows nothing about what's on screen at any given moment. And because the animation is an abstract class, it only understands its own current value and its own state. The way I like to think about animations in Flutter is to think about, say, graphing sine of x or cosine of x, and then taking that graph and taking only a segment of that graph, and then taking those numbers and then animating some object along those numbers. So animations inside of Flutter are sequential series of numbers between two values of a certain duration. And of course they can be linear, they can be curved, they can be stepwise, and they can really have any mapping we can think of. So we have the range that the actual animated object goes over, which is the range on the graph itself, and then we have the duration that this animation will live for. The smaller the duration, the faster the animation will go, and the longer the duration, the slower the animation will go. All right, so let's take a look at some actual code. To gain access to some of the animation classes in Flutter, we need to expose the Flutter animation library, package flutter animation.dart. And then you'll notice that our myapp class is a stateful widget. So naturally we need to override the create state function and then create a class to hold the state in. I've overrided the create state function and of course created a class called myapp state that extends state with myapp inside of it. Inside of this we want to make a global variable which is the animation itself. And then we also want to create the animation controller for this animation. In Flutter, the animation controller derives from the animation object and it can be used wherever the animation object is needed. However, the animation controller has additional methods on it which allow us to control the actual animation. For instance, there's a method called forward which will start the animation and then we have a method called repeat which will allow us to repeat the animation and so on and so forth. So because animations in Flutter are based on our screen refresh rate or our frames per second, and in most Flutter apps this is about 60 frames per second, we need to also provide vSync for our animation controller. And to do this we need to extend our MyAppState class with a mixin called Singer Ticker Provider State Mixin. And this gives us access to what are called ticker objects. These ticker objects listen to the refresh rate and then they give us back various numbers and those numbers then get given to the animation controller. Inside of this class we want to override the init state function so that we can set up our animation and our animation controller. As mentioned before our animation controller needs to go over a set duration. So I've set up the duration to go over 5 seconds or 5000 milliseconds. We're passing in the vsync object and then passing in this. Now we're taking our animation and we're setting it equal to what's called a tween. And then on that tween we're calling animate and we're passing in our animation controller. So a tween is a stateless object that takes a begin and an end and that's it. By default an animation object ranges from 0 to 1 and this is the range on the graph that it will cover. For instance, if we're going to animate over, say, cosine, it will animate from 0.0, .0 all the way up to 1 of that graph. However, we can make it so that it animates over a larger period of the graph. That's what we do with these tweens, in this case 0.0, .0 and 500.0. The sole job of our tween is to define the mapping from an input range to an output range. To make it so that our animation updates every single time a frame is passed to it, we can add what's called a listener, and inside of this listener we can call the setState function. And even though this setState function is taking in an anonymous function with nothing inside of it, it's still basically telling the widgets that a frame passed we want to update. You also notice that I'm using these double dots. This is what's called the cascade notation from Dart. This allows us to essentially chain the addListener method onto the return value of this entire statement. 
After we call our set state function every single time the frame refreshes, we need to call animation controller.forward and this will start the animation when our init state function is run, which is when our entire application is opened in this case. All right, so now we want to create the set of widgets that we want to animate. Inside of our build function, I'll put in a center with a child of a container. And in this container, we're going to specify the width and the height. And these will be dynamic based on where our animation is in its cycle. So as you can see, we put down the height and the width properties and inside of them we put in animation.value. Inside of this container I'm just going to instantiate a new Flutter logo and this is just a class that comes with Flutter and it will give us something to animate. We also want to override the dispose function so that we properly dispose of our animation controller. So we just put in animation controller dot dispose and then we call super dispose after it. So now let's run this application inside of our emulator and take a look at what it looks like. Okay, so here's our application and you can see the Flutter logo zooms in and in and in and in and in until it stops. So here's what happens when we reduce our tween down to 100. You can see the logo only comes in so far. So it's much smaller than it would be if we put in a thousand again. Again, here's the difference. So you can see this one almost grows to almost 10 times the size of the last one. Now I'm going to reduce the duration and I'll make it so that the animation controller repeats. So now every three seconds our animation will repeat. So it zooms in, then it starts all over again. Okay, so that's how we can couple our animation to our widgets. Now let's look at how we can decouple our animation from our widgets. So let's clear out our widget build function and I'm just going to have it return null for now. I'll make our animation controller run forward and then we want to remove the add listener set state part of this. So after removing the add listener part, we leave everything else the same and we need to create a new class. Our new class is going to extend animated widget. The animated widget class allows us to separate out the widget code from the animation code. And the animated widget doesn't maintain a state object inside of it. So instead our state is all inside of the myAppState class, whereas the logo animation derives its state from our myAppState class. With our animated widget class, because we're passing our state from our other class to our logo animation class, we need to create a constructor. The constructor takes in this class's key, so the widget key and then the animation and then we call on super we pass in key for key and then for listenable we pass in the animation now inside of this class we then build out our widget like we had it before to get at our animation we create a new variable called animation and we point it towards our listenable and then we create our center and our container and our height and width call on animation value again and then we pass in our flutter logo then we can go up to our build method inside of our myAppState class and we can call logo animation to create a new logo animation widget and then pass in our animation. Now doing this makes it so that we do not need the listener up here to listen for the frame changes. Instead, because we're extending the animated widget class, it already knows to listen for that change. So the state is changing inside of this class and then it's just affecting this class. And here's our application. You can see the logo just sort of zoomed in like before. So nothing's really changed. And I can restart the application and have the animation go again. If we want our animation to sort of change and do some different things, we can come up here to our init state function. And before we call animation controller dot forward, we can come down here and add status listeners to our animation. These status listeners check the status of our animation. And when this animation status changes, we can then affect changes with our controller. So when our animation completes, it will then reverse the animation. And when our animation status is dismissed, it will then move forward again. I know this animation can be replicated just by using the repeat method. However, this allows us to have further control over how our animations work. So you can see our animation comes in and then it goes back out and then it comes back in and it will just continue repeating like that forever. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I know it was a little bit more abstract than some of the other tutorials because we were going over some of the more specific features of the animation library inside of Flutter. 
This is because there's just so much to cover inside of the animation library. In fact, this tutorial really didn't cover much of it at all. It just covered the basics. If you like this tutorial, feel free to subscribe and like. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the box below. And if you disliked it, then by all means, downvote it as much as you like. Have a good night.